Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitemout.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art, located in Gloucester, Massachusetts, uh, Gloucester, Mass. And uh, today is December 28, 2018. And I'm doing this recording from our place in North Conway, New Hampshire. Uh, we're up here for a few days on vacation, uh, enjoying the snow and the skiing and so forth. Beautiful weather. Uh, it snowed overnight here. And uh, I'm sorry if the audio quality on this isn't quite what it normally is. Um, I don't have my microphone, so I'm using the microphone that's built into the, into the camera we use. So I hope it's sufficient and I hope you can hear me. All righty. A couple of things I wanted to go over before we get started was this. Um, we've been working with one of our uh, plugin providers on WordPress to uh, change the layout the way some of the site uh, is uh, the newsletter and the Catawiki page are formed. And this is the result. We added this this week and uh, it gives us a lot more options and allows more text to be displayed and loads a lot faster. This thing loads instantly, um, which we're really pleased about because the old plugins uh, were a little slow sometimes. All right, and we're going to be incorporating it more and more into the newsletter page itself, uh, which we did start a while ago, and now we've we've gotten them to uh, adapt one over for uh, Katawiki as well. Okay, and now let's hop over here. Uh, there were a number of things that went up last week that were pretty interesting. There were some great buys, too. There were some fabulous buys. And this was a nice-looking um, uh, piece of cloisonne that a seller had. Um, he had two of them, and he sold them separately for some reason. They were virtually identical. They were a pair. Uh, they measured about 13 inches in diameter. He described them as 19th, uh, 18th century, probably. I don't think so. I think they're 19th, but good quality on copper. And with a little cleaning, these would look absolutely superb with a plant in it. And check out the price on this. They went very reasonably. $227. Not bad at all. And then on to this. The uh, clobberware. This is a good piece of Kung Shi clobberware. Uh, the seller has two of them. Another second one is up this week. For some reason, he opted to sell them separately. And... Um, this one closed this week. There's another one up right now that will be in the newsletter. And uh, it did pretty well. Um, um, it, only, it brought $108, which isn't great. It's just pretty well, okay? And you're going to see a lot of that this week. Uh, holiday weeks tend to be pretty soft. And uh, it's people are away. People are doing other things. You're probably doing other things. Uh, so as I'm going to say, and I've said a million times, leave a bit on things, okay? This was a, a good buy. All right, and then over to this, this wonderful little Yongshen uh, saucer, okay? With, uh, often these Yongshen dishes do not have borders on them. They just have a simple brown dressing on the rim with, with, a, with a single sort of composition in the middle of flowers, and that's what this one had. This is the back of it, very typical for these plates. Um, had a, had a, a firing fissure in the back. This was done at the time it was made. It obviously, though, it did not come through to the front anywhere. All right, which is a good thing. And uh, it did pretty well. It brought $750. Sometimes these, these plates have appeared with rain marks on them as well. Some are marked, some are not. All right, so if you're looking for the rain mark, that's why it didn't have it. And this was one of the great little buys of the week. This was a wonderful Yongshan period um, uh, dish charger. Um, the figural scene in the center and these nicely spaced floral elements um, around the edges. It's, a couple of them are framed in overglazed blue uh, enamels. Beautifully done. There's a, a woman with a child on one, ba on one balcony and then a man on the other and they're talking and so forth. And uh, this was a good plate. This was a really good plate. Nice early example. And uh, check out the price, $125. That was very good buy. Okay, that was a really good buy. And it was from the same seller that had the previous plate, the Yongshen dish. All right, that was a nice looking plate. All right, and then on to this, the, the uh, Chinese export fan. This was a, a good one, probably done about 1810 to 1830, somewhere in there. Beautifully carved and had a, uh, um, a, a monogram uh, carved into it, which means it was a special order, obviously. And uh, makes it a bit more desirable because most of these were not done on special order because this was very difficult to carve. Okay, the, these monograms are not easy, easy to add, as you can see. Here's a good detail of it. And these nice relief worked uh, animals and the hunters and so forth. And be beautifully done. The silk threads on this, the silk that links these together, they were broken in some places. And he showed it in the description. Uh, I think it's over here. Here it is. All right. But it, just so you know, if you ever get one of these nice old fans, and it's not threaded, uh, you can take it to a tailor. Typically, if you have a good tailor shop in your area, um, the gals there can, uh, or the guys there can uh, uh, thread it with silk. Just provide them some silk ribbon that's about the right width. Pick your color, and it can be done for you, okay? 
All right, that was a nice thing. And then again, here we have this beautiful, this was a really good, if you're a Chinese export buyer who likes Fitzhugh, this was a good one. This was a platter. It was about 11 inches in, 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 di in diameter at the widest, but it was fully reticulated. And this is top quality Fitzhugh decoration. It has the uh, arrow border and so forth, probably done around 1800 to 1810, 1815. Nice, nice quality, some old kiln grit stuck on the bottom there. And it went for $595, which is about what it was worth. But um, uh, Chinese export stuff right now is a really great buy. If you're a collector, you know that already. Uh, but it's starting to, it's, it, I'm starting to see signs of life coming back into this market because people, I think, are recognizing the quality of a lot of this stuff. If it had been meant for the Chinese market in this quality, the prices would be through the roof. All right, but a lot of the export stuff on a quality basis is certainly on a par with anything that was done for Chinese domestic porcelain. All right, um, they made it actually a very, very high end because they got paid more. Okay, um, uh, Chinese export orders were a premium product for a lot of the producers. Okay, and this was another great buy. This was a good looking rose mandarin uh, figure old plate. Probably done about 1820 to 1840, some there, somewhere in there. But beautiful quality. A few weeks ago, one nearly identical to this sold for I think about 250 to 300 dollars. And uh, look at this. This one went for 77 dollars on Christmas week. Okay, Christmas week bargains, just like the Fourth of July. Uh, same thing happened on the Fourth. Everybody went away and forgot to check their uh, check their uh, eBay accounts. All right, and then on to this was a nice big 13 inch, not huge, but a good size uh, uh, rose mandarin punch bowl. Again, uh, pre-1850 from, from the looks of it. Nice quality decoration, lots of gilding still intact and the hair of the women. You always want to check that because a lot of times these pieces were cleaned with uh, ammonia and, um, and, and, and harsh solvents that stripped the gilding off. Gilding is very easy to remove. All right, and this plate did pretty, bowl did pretty well. It brought $1,339, okay? So, um, and I think that's about a, few, uh, about a couple of years ago. These were going for around seven or 800. Um, so it looks as though some of these nicer bowls are starting to attract attention, maybe from decorators, I'm not sure. And this is something that Tony, our friend over in France, put up, Scrap Dixon. And, and um, I feel bad for him because this was a great buy. It was a pair of Kung Chi dishes. Uh, it's a well-known pattern. Off, sometimes it was done in enamel, sometimes done in underglazed blue, sometimes done just in enamels. The wide range of decorative uh, styles that were used on these. These were about eight or nine inches in diameter each. And check the price, $111 was the final bid on this. Okay, $111.50 and 50 bucks in shipping. So $160 or $80 a plate delivered. Uh, that's a pretty good deal, okay? And that's shipping here to the US from France. Um, so it's probably less if you're in the EU, okay? And then on to this. This was something I liked a lot. This was a, a very nice egg yolk yellow chalice, 19th century with good solid gilding left on it. And the interior was like an aquatic, like a fish tank, aquatic uh, uh, plants coming up along the sides and then these sort of scaled spiraling business at the bottom. Just beautiful quality. This was a nice thing. And uh, all these Buddha symbols surround the outside. Um, here's a picture of the bolt on the bottom that joined the piece together, all right? And uh, it did pretty well. It brought $1,865, which was a good price for that, okay? Uh, not, a, not a huge amount. Nice yellow, egg yolk yellow chalices don't turn up often. If you think about it, when was the last time you saw one? Um, even the big auction houses don't get them very often, okay? And then on to this. This was another fabulous buy for the week. This was a, uh, a, basically a two-foot tall, uh, circa 1830 to 40, uh, rose mandarin um, uh, vase, um, beautiful quality, about 24 inches in height. It had a minor chip up here on the rim somewhere and a little hairline, but nothing else. This was a great thing. And um, check out the price. This went for $285 plus 100 in shipping to the U.S., for example, uh, because shipping from Europe, a big piece like this, it goes in a special category for size, so it doesn't get broken. But this was a great great thing. Um, this was a really good vase. And uh, $285 was a steal for this. Absolute steal. All right. So um, keep an eye keep an eye on those uh, big vases. They, Some of them seem to be getting fairly friendly in price. And that, this was an example of that. Nice thing. All right. And then on to the Katawiki sales. You had this good looking pair 
of uh, Yongshan dishes, uh, I mean cups rather. One of them has a squirrel climbing over, um, going after the grapes. And you see these on Wan Li uh, and um, um, transitional vases as well with the, with the squirrel and the uh, grapes, sort of a well-known pattern. And uh, the, the pair went for $104, which seemed very reasonable to me um, for that, okay? Katawiki still has some very good buys. And then over here, you had this pair of late Yongchen, early Qinlong dishes uh, with, the, with the brown enamel ground on the, uh, on the outer, outer rim, and then these beautiful, deep, uh, very, very dense Famille Rose enamels. That's what makes me think in that yellow, tends to make me think they're probably Yongchen, um, uh, more than likely. Uh, but at any rate, the pair went for 320 which was a good price for those. Not over the top and certainly um, uh, not under the money, but a nice looking pair of dishes. And then over here we had this, the uh, Café au lait ground uh, Famille Rose uh, vase with its cover. Often these, as you know, if you've seen these, these originally in garniture sets don't have covers. The covers are long gone because they, they get tipped over, they get dropped, they get busted when they're being cleaned. Here's one that was complete, a uh, nice looking thing. And uh, it went for $368, which is a perfectly reasonable price for one of those. Um, sometimes you'll see pairs of Café au lait, just bowls go for that much. Perfectly reasonable buy. And then on to this was this barb-rimmed uh, Yongchen period uh, dish. Uh, the shape uh, first uh, turned up during the Ming Dynasty and was carried forward, remained popular forever. And uh, here's an example of it. And uh, went for $137. It did have a hairline on it and that probably held it back. But that was a nice and somewhat atypical plate uh, carrying uh, patterns of the past and going forward. All righty. And now let's hop over to here. This is something that's up on uh, eBay right now. This will be in the newsletter this week. If you're a Japanese buyer, um, he says it's Meiji period. I think it's a little older than that. Um, nice, nice Kutani um, vase with a, with a dragon. Now, this is a big pot. This pot is 18 inches tall. Very big for Kutani. All right. And has this very nice, and it has a winged, um, a winged dragon ascending through these uh, clouds, these bluish clouds. Beautifully patterned, um, nice looking thing. Um, it has a small hairline on the inside of the mouth, but that is not unusual for big pieces of Kutani. And this is a big one. Uh, I, 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 you don't see 18 inch tall Kutani bases very often. And this is one of them. It's a nice one. All right, and that'll be in the newsletter this week. Also, well, these, um, this is a good looking pair of bow pots. Um, uh, first half of the 19th century, clearly. And not the typical Mandarin scene ones. These are insects and butterflies and fruit and so forth. Um, nice stippling, raised stippling on it. The handles have twist handles, and they seem to be in nice condition. And uh, those are on here, and they are up to just $61. All of these things are at very modest prices right now. All right, and they have eight days to go, and I suspect they'll do pretty well. All right, and this is a, a wonderful root carving of Li Tia Gao, a um, uh, one of the one of the immortals, beautifully done. Um, here's a picture of the, f uh, the detail of the face. And this is a big root carving. This thing is 24 inches tall, and was done by a, a, a really great carver who completely got it as far as uh, carving goes. And it's beautifully patinaed. And uh, here you can see how he used the wood grain in, in the burl to form his cape down his back. Here's a picture of him. He's perched on one foot with the other foot up and his sandaled foot you can see here. All right, and it's up to $28. He's got nine days to go. This just came up last night, um, but a, a really good one. If you like root carving, I love these things. If you like root carvings, this is a good one. It's a nice one. And then on to this, this good looking Daoguan uh, dish. It's a bowl rather. It's already up to over $1,000. It's got a few days to go. It's, it's, it got, it's got a molded, uh, a molded shape to it and then enameled and a gilt enamel rim and all that. Uh, but good quality here it is with the, with the, with the chimera running along its side and it's up to thousand ninety six dollars this is something Arthur Potts has up um, over in, in in the United in the UK and uh, we'll see how that does he has some other things up this week too that we'll be putting in the newsletter but that was a nice one and then there's this this horribly photographed but nice old piece of cloisonne um, it was a it was a, a box uh, here it is probably for an altar and um, some reason he weighed it. I don't know why they do that. At any rate, it weighs 490 grams. <laughs> and um, here's a picture of the top of it. And this probably had an under tray. You can, uh, but judging by the shape of it, this would have fit into a, a slotted under tray. The way they did under trays for on uh, jade for cups, 
you'll sometimes you'll see these jade under trays that were meant to have um, they'll have a circle in the center with a, where a cup would have sat. And this appears to be one of uh, uh, you know intended for the same type of type of mount. So it had a plate under there. But this is a nice looking example, and it has got a little bit of wear on the inside. It looks to be an early 19th century one. And we'll see how it does. It's already up to $530, $520. It closes on Monday. It closes in a couple of days. All right. And then last, we have this. This is my favorite thing of the week. I love this. This is a great uh, 18th century uh, seat cover. Silk. He has, they have it listed as a hanging or something. It's not. That's a chair cover. And um, the reason these are unusual is that, that they usually got sat on so much they got worn out and thrown. They were very delicate and silk, obviously, and they tended to get, you know, just destroyed from being used. All right, but this was a nice one. All right, beautifully done. There's the work. All right, um, minor, there's a minor uh, tear right here, which is nothing for one of these, and a couple of other spots, but nothing, nothing significant. It's very displayable. And this is a fairly big piece of silk. It is, um, I forget how tall it is. It is 61 inches. Um, in length and 19 inches across so it's a big hanging um, uh, but it was originally of course meant for a chair and I love the sleepy-eyed elephant in the middle he's great all right and the Shao character and then the vase on his back with um, uh, fruit and so forth coming out of it with this with the Sun um, uh, with the you know the, the fire the firing pearl rather coming out of his back okay and uh, we'll see how that does. It's up to 1575. It closes Monday. I think it'll do a bit better than that. It was a nice thing. All right. And that's it for the week. I'm going to be back home um, this uh, in, a, in a few days, and we'll get the regular video out, as we always do. I hope you're able to hear me okay, because I won't know until I check this. Um, and uh, have a great New Year's. And if you, if you like the videos, give us a thumbs up, as always. Subscribe here. Come over to bitamount.com and sign up for the weekly newsletter for uh, eBay and Catawicky stuff. And, other news that's going on and uh, we'll finish this uh, uh, the newsletter page up this afternoon get it up for everyone and uh, have, a, have a great weekend and a safe uh, New Year's alrighty thanks so much bye bye